Hello, everyone. This is uh, Stephen Michel, uh, NPR Digital Services. Uh, welcome. We are very happy to have you here today to join us to introduce you to the new station analytics system. This is something that we have been talking about at Digital, Ser Digital Services for quite a while now. Um, we've launched phase one of this last fall. This is uh, all about the launch announcement for phase two, which is the dashboards and reporting part of station analytics the new system. Um, so we are going to actually show that to you. That's our main goal today. Um, we're going to talk about what this thing is. We're going to talk about the benefits of using it, who it's for. By the way, it's for everybody. So even if you're not using Core Publisher, no matter what CMS you're using, um, no matter what you're using to publish your pages, this is for you. It's for everybody. We're going to talk about how it works. Better off, uh, better than that, actually, we're going to show you how it works and do a demo of both. Um, really, we're going to focus on the, the dashboards. We're going to focus on the new stuff and then specifically talk about how do you get started. We have about 30 stations already in here that have been great helping us along as we've been beta testing this. Um, so we're going to share how you can get started and take advantage of what we are about to show. Uh, so before we do the big demo, and, and Michelle walks us through this, um, I want to say a couple of words about how we got to where we are today. Because a lot of this was driven, the way we've built this, was really driven primarily by you, by stations, by talking with you about how you are using analytics data, how you're using Google Analytics, how you're using Triton data on your streams, what, what questions you have, uh, what questions that you are asked the most frequently about what metrics to look at. So we started with those questions and those conversations. and We heard a lot of themes that really helped us to build this station analytics system in the first place. So, so we want to begin with uh, an overview of what those questions were that we heard and, and what we, the questions that we really based this entire project on. So chances are you have been asked or you have asked someone at your station the following types of questions. So the first one and probably very common is, so how are we doing online? How is our station performing when it comes to all the digital stuff that we do? This is a pretty fundamental question, right? And this is a very important question that we all should be able to answer and track on an ongoing basis. And right now, that question is a little hard to answer, right? I mean, we have a lot of sources of data, and it's a lot of data, from places like Google Analytics for our site, from Triton Digital for our streams, places like Chartbeat and Facebook and Twitter and membership and pledge data, and maybe even you have an app developer and probably uh, aggregators you work with. So there's a million sources of data and frankly, it's hard to get a sense, a holistic sense of how we're doing. We believe that just like a good meal, you know, ingredients are better when they're all put together. And when you can create a great meal out of raw ingredients, the meal is always better than the ingredients themselves. So having all of our data and somehow getting it in one place, um, that's a theme we heard quite a bit. The second question we hear a lot, and you probably do too, is how big is our online audience? What do we know about how many people that we are reaching? And here, too, getting accurate data can be a challenge. I mean, when you have a main site and a news blog and another part of your site and you look at traffic, like if you've got you know, 8,000 visits to your main site, when you look at your data, 5,000 more to a separate news blog that you have, and then you get 2,000 more to a program schedule that's hosted on a third-party vendor website on a separate domain, What's the total visitors, right? When you look at that overlap, uh, do you add them all up? Is it 15,000 visits? Do you take the smallest one? You know, how do you think about if someone moved from the main site to your news blog and then to program schedule, they shouldn't be counted as three people, as three unique visitors. Uh, so we've got to find a way to, to count that. Now, fortunately, there is an easy way to do this. The problem is it does not come with Google Analytics out of the box. So it's something you have to do custom called cross-domain tracking, which many of you probably have heard of. But this is something you have to set up special in Google Analytics in order to make sure you've got accurate data. And that's something that we, we know a lot of stations struggle with. And it speaks to a larger theme that we hear a lot about, which is accuracy. I mean, if, if we're not all confident that the data we have is accurate, then it's kind of pointless, right? We have to be able to believe in the data we're seeing. So that's another theme that we took to heart uh, in thinking about building this system. Here's another question we hear a lot, which is, what metrics matter most? What should I pay attention to of all the different numbers I see in Triton or in Google Analytics? And we recognize that sometimes going to Google, Google Analytics can feel kind of like this. 
You know there's a lot of power there, but frankly, it's just way too complicated. There's way too much. A lot of the switches and knobs aren't for us as public media. They're for e-commerce sites. They're for other types of organizations. Um, we want the right numbers, and we want them in a simple way. So we are big believers that when we're building dashboards, when we're building these reporting tools, it should be simpler. It should be that only the things that matter most to jump out. Those are the things that we want to jump off the screen and be really super clear. And it should be, of course, the things that matter most to us in public media, not to every average organization that's out there. So that was, that's been really helpful for us to hear. And, and you'll see we've actually based a lot of our decisions on, on exactly this question, too. Here's another question that I bet you've heard before, which is, hey, our bounce rate is now 47%. And the question is, is that good? Is that bad? How would I know without context? Just a number in isolation doesn't really help, right? So um, even if you look at this over time, you know, let's say that you have a metric that you were looking at here over the course of a, a few months, and it looks good, right? It's going up. Up and to the right is always a good thing. We like that very much. So you might look at your own station data and see a trend line like this. Like maybe it's, hey, our mobile traffic is going up. That's great news. But then, what if you had access to other stations' data as well? And what if suddenly by doing that and seeing other stations like you, you saw that their mobile traffic, or whatever the metric is, was going up at a much, much faster rate? All of a sudden, that changes how useful that number is. And that changes how you think about it. That changes uh, what you might want to do about it. Um, it changes everything. So we are big believers that when you look at metrics, when you look at any kind of data, context is everything. It's the context of seeing a number over time. It's the context of seeing a number compared with other like-minded organizations. In our case, other stations, other stations like you. That's what really turns data into something that is actionable and truly useful. So uh, why in the world am I showing Homer Simpson here? So this is a strange little thing. So this is, a, at first glance, uh, kind of a rudimentary little sculpture, right? You might think that some kid created this out of Play-Doh and put it together, and it's kind of cute. And of course, the, the expressions are just classic Simpsons. But what if I were to tell you that this sculpture is actually on the head of a pin? There's an artist out there who is creating these incredibly tiny, intricate sculptures on the head of a pin or in the eye of a needle, um, completely mind-blowing. And his name is Willard Wigan, and I'll look him up because it's just fascinating stuff what he's doing. And, and it's a silly example, but it just goes to show that when you, when you suddenly put something in context, it changes how you think about it. So all of a sudden it changed how I thought about this from some kind of really crude sculpture to something pretty amazing. Here's another question that we hear a lot, which is, um, you know, we added this thing to our homepage and everyone likes it, but are people using it? What's actually working? We hear this question all the time as well. And it, goes to show that you know we don't we, we, we can't know what is working on our websites unless we know who is clicking on what right and Google Analytics is a pretty helpful there because out of the box it measures pages so if something that the user clicks on loads a new page Google Analytics will track that but here's the thing a lot of the time when we want to know how something works that's not enough so for example if there's a listen live link in your header and also in the body of the page. And there's numerous ways of getting to your listen, uh, your audio player. If you want to know which of those buttons is more effective and which one maybe you could remove or improve on, there's no way to know that through Google Analytics by default. You have to put in special event tracking in Google Analytics in order to be able to tell that. Same thing for things like if you're clicking on a carousel on the home page that doesn't load a new page, but it does load new content into the same page, there's no way to track that without putting in this special event tracking. And that's, that's kind of annoying to have to go through and do that. It's a manual process that you have to do in the, in the code itself. Um, so we, we heard a lot of people, a lot of stations, um, complaining about that as well, that in Google Analytics, that's kind of hard to do. And let's face it, you know, we need to have measurement of everything. We need to be able to measure the whole forest, but we also need to be able to measure these individual trees, these individual elements on our pages that we're experimenting with or that we care uh, particularly much about. And then finally, the last question that we've heard a lot, uh, more like a complaint, I guess, which is, 
you know, when, oh, Google Analytics has a new version of their code, we have to go back into all our pages and update it again. Or now we have Chartbeat to add to our website, so we have to go back in and add that to our pages as well. And we're constantly calling up our developers or our vendors to have to do that, and that's kind of a pain. You know, we don't want to have to make these kind of updates to our pages all the time. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we just had to change it once and then never had to touch it again? Because unless, that, unless it's that easy, you know, a lot of us with limited resources and time, we just don't have time to constantly be adding the new and latest tracking code to our pages. Um, we want it just to work, and that's really what, what we're trying to do. So we heard all of this. Um, we've been formulating this for, for quite a while. You know, here's a summary of, of really what turned into the key ingredients for the station analytics system. It's more accurate, more comprehensive data that we can trust. You know, so the, the new tag that we've created with our system replaces the Google Analytics out of the box tag and it adds in the stuff that we care most about and that we need the most. The cross domain tracking, the event tracking, and we'll talk more about that. It's got to be easy to deploy and maintain. So if changes happen la later to the Google Analytics tag, we don't want to have to go back into our HTML pages again to make those constant updates. We don't want to have to have that need for the developers to constantly be going back and back. Uh, the third thing we heard a lot about that we built in is aggregating metrics all in one place. So you've got metrics from, uh, from Google Analytics, from Triton, and eventually other sources as well that we can put into one place so we can all see, see that holistic view of how we're doing. And it's tailored for public media. It's the metrics that we care most about, that, add, that matter most to us, and so it's emphasizing the, the things that matter to help them jump off the page and not kind of bury us in the kind of complexity that Google Analytics sometimes feels like. And then finally, comparisons. You know, it's, it's about context. So I need to be able to compare my data as a station, not only over time, but with others. I want to compare it to the entire system. I want to see how my bounce rate compares to everybody else. Or I want to compare how my average time spent listening to my streams compares to other stations like me. So thinking about doing things like, I want to compare how my listening time compares to uh, other classical stations and cities of my similar population size. Um, that suddenly becomes much more useful and is a much better way of answering this question, is that good? Is the number you're seeing actually good or not? Um, that's the most important question that any dashboard should answer, and that's what we've been, we've been working on. So we, we've done this all along with a lot of input from stations, um, and that will continue because this is just the beginning, not by any means the end of, of where we're going with the station analytics system. Um, all along in this process, we've worked with closely with a user group of stations, about eight or so stations, um, that have fed into, especially early on, a lot of the key requirements about what was most important, what metrics mattered most, the interface that was needed against that, what data sources were important. Um, when we showed them early ideas for features, for sketches and wireframes of what it could be, um, we're looking at visual designs of the actual dashboards, um, that user group was incredibly helpful in this process. And we also heard from, uh, from dozens of stations uh, as well about what's important. Then the monthly metrics calls that we have now with the station analytics system, uh, the, the station analytics folks that are already signed on, um, we hear a lot of great feedback, and, and we want that to continue, and that's kind of the beginning of this process as well. So that's kind of how we got here. Now let's move on to actually the more exciting stuff, which is what in the world is this thing? Uh, what does it do? What does it look like? And how do I get started? All right, so there are actually a few layers in this cake. Uh, that first layer, the really foundational layer that we needed to build was best of breed site tagging. So this gives you the ability to put better data into your Google Analytics account and makes it easier for you to maintain by creating uh, a friendly form-based interface that's going to do all of the configuration that you need. Now, we will continue to send information to your Google Analytics, but one of the other things that we'll be doing is we'll be pulling information from Google Analytics, Google Analytics using the API and storing that in the metrics database, which also has information from Triton for streaming um, and from other sources. Uh, we'll continue to build on that to pull in things like social media, podcast data, 
any of those things that we think are really going to add value to the system, we want to put them all in one place, and that's our metrics database. And then the, the top layer, the frosting on this cake, is the dashboards and reports. These are station-focused dashboards that are going to draw your attention to those critical, important metrics and give you uh, the ability to compare to both a system-wide roll-up and to stations like me. And we'll talk exactly about how stations like me is created when we move to the demo. But I want to talk a little bit first about how the site tagging works. So that first layer is the station analytics system, which has a number of entry forms, which are going to walk you through information about your station, your sites, and some of the configuration options. That produces a tracking code, which you're going to add to your pages. Now, it's one tracking code. You don't have to keep track of different versions for different sites. You're going to use one tracking code that is never going to change, that is unique to you. Um, it can live alongside of your existing Google Analytics tag if you have customizations that you've already implemented and you want to do some sort of phased switch over or if you just want to use this in addition to what you're currently doing. You have the flexibility to do that. Most of our stations have um, moved towards using just the one, um, but if there are reasons why you need to have two, we can certainly support that. So then all of that information that you've entered into those forms is captured in our database where logic is applied, and the system will spit out a customized Google Analytics tag, which is stored in our CDN. In addition to the Google Analytics customizations, things like custom variables, event tracking, cross-domain, download tracking, exit links, there's tons of stuff that you would have to implement on your page. We do all of that through the system, through those forms, and then we add other tags like chart beat tagging. All of that is rolled up into one unique tracking snippet that is pushed into the CDN, and then your station pages pull down that, that information based on the tracking code that you've added. So any changes that are made in the system won't change that tracking code that's on your site. So you're just going to keep that one and use the, the forms to make all of the changes and have that populate down into your site. And I think we have a question. Yes. So, and I actually uh, invite anyone, if you have questions as we go through the, the demo as well, feel free to use the question area right in the GoToMeeting panel and we will get to those. Um, so one, one question that came in here, are there, aren't there potential problems with using more than one GA tracking code? Uh, nope. So Google Analytics does support this. It um, is something that we have been doing for a while and we've thoroughly tested. Um, there are sometimes changes that you need to make to any of the, the static code on your pages to, to support it. Um, but we've had uh, large stations and small stations are able to implement this and it's worked well for us. Another question is, um, just, to, just to cover all our bases here, is what does CDN stand for? Sure, that is a content delivery network, and it uh, basically just means that it is a cached and a duplicated system, so we have redundancy there, so we know that um, unlike something that's stored in one location as a single file that might not be able to be accessed by thousands of users at the same time, or you might trip over the cord on that server and knock it out. Um, this is always availability and has guaranteed uptime and can support all of the, the calls to that information. Any other questions? No, we're good so far. All right. So you may be curious to see what this looks like. So we are actually going to move over from our PowerPoint demo to, uh, to the live demo. So bear with me one moment as I'm going to exit out of PowerPoint. All righty. And if I can just move my mouse over here. How convenient. We have that right up. And is everybody able to see that? Yep, we're in good shape. Great. Okay. So this is actually the main dashboard of the station analytics system. And when you log in uh, after next week, those of you who are, are currently using the tag management portion of the system, you won't be seeing this yet because um, this is actually in our staging environment. We're just firming up a couple of small things and making sure everything works 
correctly. So if you notice something that's a little bit weird, um, that may be because we are, we are strictly speaking, still in a test environment. But we are very excited to be launching this in, in the next week. Um, so on this main dashboard, there's a couple of things to note. It should look familiar to those of you using tag management. And tag management remains as an option in this top menu in the blue along the top. And you can see here that we're in the main dashboard. Uh, so the main dashboard focuses on the two most important metrics for your website and for your stream. So right off the bat, we've married not just those metrics about the website that you may already be familiar with, and those are our unique visitors, which we use to answer the question of, is my audience growing on the web? Um, but it also compares that to average active sessions in right aligned there, so we can see for our stream, is the audience metric that we've chosen, is that growing? And you can actually see that the trend looks like our average active sessions for streaming uh, is growing uh, much more rapidly uh, than our unique visitors. Um, if we move down the page, we have our key metric on audience engagement. Um, so for our website, that audience engagement metric is pages per visitor. And for our streams, we're looking at the average time spent listening. So this gives us kind of that quick thermometer read to tell us what's going on on the site. Um, we also have a little widget there with our chart beat current visitors. Um, and then we have a link that shows some of the top stories for the, the time period that we're looking at. It's important to note now that right below that main navigation, we actually have a toolbar that allows us to make selections uh, to choose exactly what information we're looking at. So you can see the first element there is our Google Analytics profile. Here we have the ability, if you have multiple profiles, you would be able to navigate between them. So if you have a profile for one website, um, so you're using a, a roll-up profile and then you have individual profiles for each of your web properties, you would be able to see those here. Um, and there's also uh, the ability to compare or to look at the roll-up, which is the entire population. You can also see that there is a drop-down here for streams. If you had multiple streams, you would be able to select the different streams from the drop-down. And then one of the really exciting parts of this system is the ability to compare. So Steve talked about the importance of adding context to any of these metrics that we're looking at. And I think this is actually one of the most powerful pieces. So here we're comparing to all of our member stations. So when we look at this, um, any of the comparison metrics are going to be on that network-wide roll-up. But what if I was actually interested in looking at stations like me? So the stations like me is actually uh, something that you can edit. So again, it's based on the information that you enter into the tag management system. So when you create your station in there, it's going to ask you for a variety of metadata. And you can see here that I can choose by Arbitron format. And I can also make selections based on market size, um, by geographic area, by station type, um, and then by traditional radio metrics. Um, so if in this case we're looking at 49 stations, which are similar to me, looking only at Arbitron format, what if I wanted to narrow that down and only look at stations in a market size of 1 million or more? Now it's going to tell me that there are 23 stations that match my selection. But maybe I want to drill down even further and I decide, okay, I'm, I'm going to compare that only to stations that are in Alaska. Now here you'll see. Oops. I guess that doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> it's so oddly that doesn't work. I don't, I don't know why. I guess uh, it might be something about Alaska. I love Alaska, though. So here we can see that the, the system is going to indicate that there are zero stations that match my selection. So that's going to give me a prompt that I need to go back and change. Um, but there is one other message here that I wanted to call out. Um, this message down here says, sorry, there aren't enough stations in the system that match your selection. Change your options until there are three or more matching stations. Now this is actually important because this speaks to the data privacy of the system. Uh, if you were to select something that gave you more than zero stations but less than three, it actually won't allow you to use that as a comparison. And the reason for that is that we didn't want stations to feel like 
there was the ability for other folks to drill down to a level that would give them only their station. So if you were hoping to use the system to select only uh, Boston stations that are joint licensees um, so that you could spy on what WGBH is doing, um, you're going to be out of luck here. We actually use the, compar the comparison so that you can get an idea of how you're performing, but not do a direct comparison to another station and view their data without their consent. Um, so we'll cancel out of this. One thing around privacy, someone who was asking this on uh, the questions as well is, you know, similarly, we will never share a station's data externally or with other stations without your express approval. Um, so when we do our own analyses to look at system-wide trends, it's always aggregated data. It's always anonymous. Um, you know, WHYY, we're showing some of their data here because we went to them and asked, is it okay that we show this during this demo? But otherwise, your data is your data. It's private. Yeah, that's an important, important note. Um, there are cases where we will share data. So if we partner with a station to run an experiment, we'll always make sure that we're explicit upfront about situations where we would be looking to share that data with a, a wider audience. And as Scott is asking a question following on too is, um, do we know what those three stations are ever? And no, so even when there is a bunch of stations, you know, if you filter down, you're never gonna know exactly who they are. And again, that's for just data privacy reasons. Well, that said, I think there are sometimes ways that when you look at the content reporting, you might be able to figure out who's in that mixture. Um, but not be able to call them out separately. Um, so if you see the About GBH page popping up in, in the content reporting, that might give you a clue that they're somewhere in the mix. All right, so the next exciting thing, and just in the interest of, um, of not upsetting the system and causing it to re-query, because I think any of you who have worked in Google Analytics know that sometimes uh, waiting for the data to return can be a little bit slower than we'd like. Um, so there are sometimes some delays in the system, and I don't want to switch this. But you do have the ability to use these site segment filters, which are based on the same Google Analytics um, segments that are available out of the box. So you could look at any of these reports for just your mobile visitors or just your new visitors or conversely just the returning visitors. Um, and you also have direct search and referral that are currently available in the system. Um, and of course, um, this is another area where we'd be looking to expand at some point in the future, but this is what we were able to offer uh, for our launch. So um, again, we have kind of a full metric here, and we have a little bit of a trend where we're seeing a, a huge spike in traffic there. And, and I'm curious what that might be. So I'm going to move through the system to this audience tab to see if I can get a better look at what was going on there. You know, one question while that's loading that, that came in as well is um, actually from two people is if there's any plans about asking stations to voluntarily grant permission. So you can actually have people saying, hey, it's okay if they see my data and they see my data. Uh, and that, that's an interesting idea. It's not something that we have planned right now, but that's exactly the kind of request that we want to hear to know how do we expand this out to be more useful uh, for stations in the long run. Yeah, it actually is something that I think we could support right now because we have the ability. So when you create your login, you'll see that you can assign yourself to a station. And that station assignment is what gives you the ability to, to view the report. Um, it is possible to be assigned to more than one station. So if there is a relationship that you have with another station that um, would allow you to have access to all of their information, we could certainly um, build that into the reporting. And unfortunately, um, this is going a little slowly right now. Um, let me see if I can get a shorter time period to come up here. And I'm not sure if that's not loading just because we're on the wireless network here. Um, but let me see if I can get something else to come up. Uh, there was another question here about um, encryption. So are, is there any concern that there's, we're not using encryption for the information that's being sent from the tag to Google Analytics and so forth? Uh, it is possible. Actually, if your site is secure, then that information would be sent securely. Right. Uh, the only information that's being sent is the Google Analytics information. So it is no more or less secure than Google Analytics. Uh, 
All right, so I'm going to switch over to the engagement tab here and see if we can't get that to load. So, interesting. The dangers of doing a live demo on a staging server. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, this, this would probably qualify as the nightmare that I would have had about this demo. Um, <laughs> I assure you that this was cooperating much, much better uh, just a few moments ago. So um, audience and engagement don't seem to want to come up. Let me see if we can get the content report. Okay. I wonder if we're having network issues. My email is struggling too. <laughs> um, we, we got one comment uh, from, from Scott. Thank you, Scott. In these situations, I just send off a bunch of emails to cphelp at ds.npr.org. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. I'm not sure if our network went down or something. Uh, let me see if I can. You can also log out and back in. Maybe that would. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't have any of that, <clears throat> Jackie. Um, OK. Well, what we can take a look at. So um, if these ever want to cooperate with us, they are exciting. Um, and this activity screen, actually, I think is one of my favorites. Because the activities is actually based on custom variables that we've implemented that allow you to roll up um, all of your pages into page categories that represent the most critical areas of functionality for our public media sites. So it breaks down um, those page views and allows you to summarize them into the activities that they represent. So you can look at a quick summary of how many visits include reading news articles or stories on your site, um, how many visits are streaming, how many are looking at program pages or people pages, or important but small, um, pledging. Um, it gives you a place where you can not only summarize these up for yourself, but it'll also give you a way to compare those activities across stations like me and the network as a whole. If you're already on the analytics service, I think you're familiar with the idea of what I'm talking about. Um, this will actually enable you to look at that information right in your Google Analytics account, as well as this. So if the system uh, doesn't want to cooperate, we do have the backup of knowing that all of this data is coming from Google Analytics. Um, so we can get it directly from there in their reporting. So in the meantime, I'm trying on another machine here, wondering if uh, we can get that working. One moment. Our network just dropped out. I'm going to talk a little bit about the tab for tag management. So you see here that after all of the main dashboard and those dashboards, we still have a tab that's devoted to tag management. Um, and that is where you'll find really the, the setup that enables all of this work. So we talked about that first layer being that better site tracking. Um, when you go in, you'll be asked to create a station. And to do that, you have information like the station name. So that's whatever you, whatever you call yourselves, the name that's on your paycheck, what you talk about when you're presenting externally. It's really whatever you want. In this case, it's just WHYY, but sometimes we see uh, things like Minnesota Public Radio could be used there. Um, we do ask that you enter your call letters. So if you're using something like that, um, we can see it there. Um, and then just basic information, um, including that metadata information, so TSR and rank and population, that are used then when we build the stations like me. So those things can be a little bit difficult to find sometimes, but they are important in, uh, in helping the system to work correctly. So it looks like on a separate machine here, I do, have, I do have it working. So it might be something wrong with this first machine we tried, something wrong with its network connectivity. So what I'm thinking is we can change over to this. All right, you want to switch presenter there? Yes, assuming I can find the name of this machine. Uh, I'll go ahead and switch it for you. Okay, change presenter. 
Thank you for bearing with us. This is what makes it really exciting. Some people skydive, <laughs> not me. I just give live demos, it's amazing. All right, and hopefully this is actually the machine I intended to be. You're yes. Seeing it? Great. Okay, so you should be able to see this screen now. And um, why don't I, I can click, you look, let's change back around, here. Receiving right. seats, can't you tell it's like uh, There's a lot of musical chairs going on. It's just how we keep from falling asleep. <laughs> okay, so I hope that um, that looks good for everybody. Let me know if uh, you can't see that. Okay, great. So um, here we have the audience slide. I'm not sure why. Maybe that one timed out because we were trying to be prepared by having it already loaded. Uh -huh, yes. um, so here we can see site audience and whether or not uh, we're growing over time. So this is showing us the last full month because that's the metric that we've selected to summarize by. But then you can see the trend is put there next to it so that we can understand, well, all right, last month I was at 566, but really what's been going on over time and what's contributing to that? And we can clearly see that in the last month there was a certain point um, where we had a lot more traffic than other days. So that really has been driving our number up. And I'm curious to find out what's going on with that. When we look at our streaming audience, it looks like the streaming has been increasing, but at a, a completely different pattern. So that's interesting to know. All right. So when we flip over to the next slide, which is uh, the engagement, we'll see if I've cursed this machine just by moving over to this. Yes, if you. It might be me. I don't have the touch. You can see again that in the right-hand side, it's loading um, the monthly number. So it's going to tell me for the entire month of March, how did we do? And then on the left-hand side, it will hopefully generate a graph that will let me see how that looked over time, what was contributing to that. And there we see it. Um, so one of the things that's interesting here is to see that um, our pages per visitor are a little lower than the stations that we're comparing to, and maybe that's a little concerning that, uh, you know, on average, people are really not staying to see two pages in their visit, and over time, they're not even coming back enough to, to make up for those short visits. Um, it's not uncommon for us to see a large decline in the engagement number when a story um, drives viral kind of traffic to the site because people are very interested in that one piece of content. So I wonder if that's what's going on here. Um, and again, we can see that our streaming, while our average active sessions were going up, it looks like uh, our average listening time was actually coming down. Uh, so we may want to look at that later. Um, but we can drill into the content screen directly here, and we can see that, oh, okay, so that big spike, it looks like this Hurricane Sandy story was the one that was driving that traffic. That had uh, 90,000, over 90,000 page views coming from Reddit. So it looks like that was the story, and when I have traffic coming from a social source like Reddit or Facebook or Twitter, it's not uncommon to see a high bounce rate on that. So that's probably what drove my engagement down, and I shouldn't be worried that the overall content of my site isn't supporting my, my visitors. So now we'll see the amazing activities graph that I was talking about, hopefully. Um, one question that came in while, while we're looking at this is, um, for folks that are already Chartbeat customers, will they be able to drop that account and still get all the Chartbeat data that we're getting now? So one thing you should know is we've actually built Chartbeat into the tag that we're talking about here. So if you have a separate Chartbeat account now directly with Chartbeat, um, we can basically get you that same data and that same type of account for free. And we can have actually, using our tag, you'll be getting that automatically for free. So you can talk to us throughout the setup process and we'll get the details of that figured out. But that is something we've built into this chart feed if you use it. Yeah, and if you don't use it, then you'll soon get to take advantage of it. Um, one of the other things to point out here is that wherever you see this question mark, um, you can click in there and get some tips about uh, what you're looking at and how to use it. So here's a nice tip on the dashboard toolbar and how I can use that to filter my data. And then down here on the chart, we'd actually see uh, an explanation of what we're looking at. And so we see that this is site activities. 
I'm going to switch back to the last seven days to see if that will load for us. Oh, and there it is. All right. So we can see here that primarily it looks like my visits include stories. Uh, people seem to be more interested in coming to the site to read stories and less interested in streaming. Um, but if we, if we you know, leave stories out as the primary driver, and that's probably, um, it's probably interesting to look at these kind of as they compare to each other. So we see that program pages are actually quite popular, um, schedule, playlists, things like event, we have all of these on here so that we can understand um, really how each of those activities is contributing to, to the site's usefulness and how popular it is. Um, and we expect that we will shortly be able to show this in a comparison format so that you'll be able to understand those things as they compare to, to the sites like me selection. So there's one question, a few questions coming in asking, right. of course, when do I get to play with it? When do I get my hands on it? Um, so we're looking at uh, next week, probably end of next week. Um, we'll confirm that and obviously send out an announcement when it is live. Um, you know, our goal is to not wait until it's perfect to get it in your hands. You know, so there's going to be tweaks as we go, of course. Um, but we, we're excited to get it out there as soon as we can. So we will definitely send out an email blast and let you all know for sure when it's, when it's ready. Yeah, again, um, you know, just to mention, um, this is planned to be a phased rollout, so we do want to get the things that we can offer you working correctly, um, but they may not be all of the things that we hope for. So, for example, we'll be able to release this activities with your activities, but to compare to other stations, it may take us uh, a little while to add that to the graph. So, um, I think that you'll find plenty to play with, so I hope you'll be excited, but also bear with us on the things that are yet to come. So um, one question is uh, around the, I think, the audience activities that we're seeing here around how they are determined. Sure. They're determined by you. Um, so when you go through the setup process for tag management, one of the things that I know people love to skip over is a very long section. It's a whole eight fields where we ask you to add example URLs. These example URLs are the only way that we can know what a story page looks like on your site and what the streaming page looks like on your site um, and where you have events or your support links. So they are actually uh, very important information. So if you have signed up in the tag management system and you haven't provided those example URLs, it might be a good idea to go back and check and make sure that they're in there. Um, this is also information that would be sent to your Google Analytics account. So uh, one of the great benefits of being a member of the DS Station Analytics service is that it also enables you to uh, upgrade your Google Analytics account to premium. And a lot of the functionality that we have built either into these dashboards or into the um, tag itself is the ability to send custom variables uh, into your Google Analytics account. And we have done this um, because we know that, um, that none of you were previously premium customers. We are sending data as soon as you implement the, the TMS tag, or excuse me, the station analytics tag, we are sending data into those custom variables above uh, five. So um, this particular information, if you're already implementing the tag, you should see data in the custom variable six slot to tell you um, how your pages are rolling up. Do we have any other questions before we move on? Uh, I'm just going through, there's a few coming in. Um, streaming in particular, if you could talk about where the streaming number comes from, this is sure. not like total streaming, right? It's just the website people that are streaming because this is meant to be activities on your website. Yeah, in this particular graph, Steve is correct. So when it says streaming, it's actually uh, website visits that include the streaming function on your website. So what we wanted to understand here is in terms of your website audience, what activities are they engaging with? So this is not looking to compare your average active sessions to your website visits. Um, I think we know that there are lots of ways to get to your stream, and if you were to start doing math comparing how many people are connected to your streams versus how many people on your website, we would quickly notice that there isn't necessarily a relationship between those two numbers. Um, so for this 
streaming calculation, we are looking at either events, so clicks that launch a player that may not be hosted on your website, or page views. Um, and it combines those two to create the, the streaming metric. Okay, excellent. And there's a few others, but I think some of the feature requests we'll come to in a minute. Some people have, are piping in with some great feature ideas um, for what we could do next. I'm going to switch back to this screen. <laughs> Sorry for our change roo today, but this is um, this is the easiest way for get for us to get that to working. Okay, and we will keep on going. Is that is that one on the presenter now? All right, moving again. Okay, my my next worst nightmare is that I accidentally drink Steve's coffee. It's tea, but you know you probably noticed. <laughs> Um, so thanks for bearing with us for the demo. Uh, so let's uh, go back and just do a, a quick summary of what we saw. So for site tagging, what you get is one line of code that includes everything. Really, what you need to put on your website is just that single station analytics tag. Um, it includes your complete customized Google Analytics tag that's going to give you better data in your Google Analytics account. So Think of the tag as just the mechanism for passing the information. You're still going to be passing data into Google Analytics, into whatever account you decide to send that to. So if that's the account that you're currently using, you're going to continue to log in just like you would and see data there. But you're going to get things like uh, better cross-domain tracking. So you may notice some changes uh, when you're not counting your pledge site visitors separately and then adding those together with your main site visitors. We'll be able to continue those visits across the different domains that they're touching. Um, we also have things like download tracking is going to show up in your event tracking. So anytime somebody clicks on that PDF of your station's annual statement, um, how many people read those? Does anybody know? Uh, a couple of our sites do now because they have that tracking. Um, and the page type tracking will also appear in custom variables. You'll get all of that as soon as you're able to implement the new tag. And you'll also get the Chartbeat code. So like Steve mentioned, if you're not using Chartbeat now, you have the ability to add a Chartbeat account, and we can set up that dashboard for you once you've implemented the code. And you'll have real-time data available to understand how people are interacting with your site in that particular moment. This can be really helpful in the case of breaking news or stories that go viral, um, because it'll, it'll actually alert you to let you know when you've reached a new traffic peak. Um, and future tags can be added easily. And this is not just speaking to whether we want to upgrade the Google Analytics from the current tracking to maybe universal analytics. This is actually this is actually speaking to other services, other tools. We can actually add those uh, through this interface so that if we decide that we want to start um, participating in another service that provides additional data, we can do that and we can do it without getting a developer involved on your site. And most importantly, uh, what you have here is local control. You're going to decide what your tracking strategy should be. Do you want to track all of your sites with separate accounts? Do you want to track them all in one roll-up account? That's up to you, and you can decide if you want this to replace your current tracking or if you want to run it alongside of and you know, kind of get a feel for what you're getting before you switch over completely. That's it too is your decision. Um, and it's also done on your timeline. So when you decide that you're ready to complete the information and implement the tag, then you will have access to all of that information and all of these great dashboards. Um, so to summarize the dashboards, we really have tried to target the metrics that we feel matter most to your site and streams. And this isn't just my opinion, it's not Steve's opinion. We have talked with people and and um, gotten lots of feedback, and you're giving lots of feedback now, so we'll continue to evolve. But we think what's most important are things like audience growth and engagement, um, understanding what top performing content is driving that growth and engagement, uh, understanding how the different activities on your site, those different verticals, play into achieving the goals that you have, um, and understanding where this traffic is coming from. And above all, the ability to compare that to either the entire system or to stations like you. I think this is really powerful stuff that we don't have to sit alone in a dark room asking Google for this information. All right, so here's really the key benefit of 
of this better measurement easier. If we stop, start by getting better data, we get better answers that lead to better insights. And those can lead us to ask better questions and build better websites, which give us better data. Um, and we can really continue to build on, on that cycle. Our ultimate goal here is just to get to universal measurement for each station. Um, we want to understand the complete view of how your digital strategy is performing. We want to have benchmarks, and we want to be able to give insights that support your decision making. And for the system, this universal measurement gives us the ability to understand our performance to collective goals, how our audience is growing, engaging, and really understand our aggregate value. Um, we'll be able to share best practices and learnings from each other. And this is the part that's really interesting for me is that I get to dive into this data and start to pull out those interesting things that we see. Um, so we can tell the rich story of the impact of public media. So how to get started. Uh, you can get started on your own. If you go to analytics.nprstations.org, you can start signing up right now. Or you can join an upcoming workshop. We have uh, three different workshops scheduled. We'll be sending out those invitations so you can choose the one that's best for you. And we'll walk through the process together step by step. There'll be a number of us available so we can answer your questions. We don't have to read them out over the air. We can chat answers back and forth to you. Um, so if you're a non-core publisher station, to get started, you'll go to analytics.nprstations.org and enter your station information, add the info about all of your websites, add the subdomains and domains that you use for your site. This is where you'll also want to enter that page information with example URLs. You can then add your Google Analytics account and then just grab your new tracking code and add it to all of your web pages. And again, if you have multiple web pages, it's one set of code that is specific to your station. And we just ask that as a step six, um, you verify that that tracking code is working correctly. This lets us know that it's in the right place, that it is the right information, um, and that you haven't done anything that would cause the data to be double counted. Sometimes we forget that when we add the new code, uh, if we are using the same accounts, we need to remove the old code. For core publisher stations, we're going to handle your core publisher site. So you don't have to worry about anything with that. Um, you create a login and select your station from the dropdown. You should see your station is already created for you in there. Um, but we do want you to verify that the information is correct. We do want you to put your contact information in there. I think it defaulted to my name, which uh, I am actually not the contact for the majority of stations. And then you can grab your tracking code and add that to any web pages that aren't part of Core Publisher. So if you do have a pledge page that's hosted outside of Core Publisher, um, if you do have a completely separate website, if your main website is not Core Publisher, you'll want to add that tracking code to your site. And again, make sure you verify. Um, Google Analytics real time will tell you right away if it's sending data. You'll see that. Um, and we ask that you follow up usually a day or so later to make sure that you're not seeing half your normal volume or twice your normal volume or something like that. So what do you need to get started? You want to sit down and think of a list of all the sites and subdomains that you want to track. And sometimes it's pretty straightforward, but make sure you include parts of your site that are powered by third-party vendors. So if your streams are hosted by Stream Guys and they launch the Stream Guys player, it's important information for us to know and to have entered in the system. You want to have your Google Analytics account numbers or UA numbers. Those are your web property IDs and they're how Google understands where to send the information. So do you want to send that all to one account? Do you want to implement separate accounts for each site? Uh, do we want to use a new one or do you want to continue in the account that has all of your history? That's a decision that you get to make. Um, so we just ask that you think about that before you come in and start setting up the system. And then, of course, you're going to need all that information about your system. What are your call letters, your format, your TSR, all that boring stuff uh, that you'll have to gather. If you don't know all of it, if for some reason you can't remember what your QM was in the last report, you can join our workshop and your station relations rep will actually have access to that information and be able to provide it for you. So we have a lots of plans about what we might enhance in the future. Um, this list will get longer. It already has based on your great comments. So we've had numerous people commenting in about, you know, creating new users and different views and maybe maybe thinking about AdWords data and other data in here. But, you know, th so that's great. Keep it coming. 
you know, one thing we might do is actually when we get stations, uh, more stations on here is maybe we'll deploy a survey where we can really get all of your opinions about, you know, here's all the things that we could do to build this out and make it even better. Help us prioritize Absolutely. what we should work on, right? Because we're going to have a long list of ideas, some of which are going to be like high effort, some of which are going to be easier, and we're going to want to draw on you to hear. But here you see some of the some of the few ideas that we've had already for extending this even further, you know, more listening metrics like podcasts, bringing in Facebook and Twitter, I think would be great in this system, right? So you could see truly what is our reach across our properties as well as our social media properties. So that's part of what's, what's coming. I know many of you are sending in suggestions now. Keep those coming. Those are great. We love to hear them. Great. Um, if you have a lot of detailed questions, I do think that joining one of our workshops will be the best place for you to get those really specific questions answered. But there are a few high-level questions that we know come up. Um, number one, does this cost extra? No, this is part of your digital services fee. Um, so if you are already on board with digital services, this is a, an add-on service that will just add value to what you're getting. Um, does it work with my site or stream? Um, this actually works on any page that Google Analytics can track or any stream that you're measuring using Triton. Um, it's not just for core publisher stations. We'll work with you to be able to implement this on whatever CMS you are using. So you do have to be using Triton already in order to see the streaming data. And if you aren't using Triton already, most of you are, but if you're not, just contact us and we'll, we can work through that process and, and help you get set up. Great. Um, and most importantly, I know a lot of people have asked, once I implement this, where do I look for my data? Your data is still going to be available in those source accounts. We're just pulling it into the dashboards, but we're still making sure that all of your Google Analytics data is going to be in the account that you currently use with the login that you currently use. So someone was asking, for example, you know, where can I go to, to track these exit links, like where people are clicking off of my site? Sure. Um, so the exit links is actually utilizing the event tracking. So you should see, actually, when you go into events, there will be a category for exit links um, or external, and there will be a category for downloads. And you can drill into each of those to see um, some additional details. Right down to, in the label, you'll see the individual link that they, they clicked on. And in many cases, those are actually your streaming links. So if your stream is hosted on a different domain, uh, the system will check that against the main domain and say, okay, this isn't one of my domains. So it adds that as an exit link. And that can be helpful to know because that is not a bounce at all. That is a, that is a success. So I know we are a little bit over, but there are some great questions coming in. So if you're able to hang out through some of these great questions, um, thank you, and please do so. If not, um, we hope you come to one of the uh, sessions that will be coming to you via email. And um, we'd love to help you get started. I mean, this is the kind of system that is as valuable as the number of stations who are using it, right? The more stations that are using it, the more helpful the comparative data is going to be, the stations like me, uh, results and charts. So let's see, a few other questions. Um, one is uh, how many users at the station can have access to the dashboard? I don't believe we have any limitations on that. Right. So either you can set up a shared login, right, or you can have each you know, member of your station create a new account, associate them with your station in, our, in this tool, and be able to get to the dashboard. So that is totally up to you. Uh, let's see. Covered that one. So. You know, uh, Jessica Clark asked a really good question about engagement. You know, we talk about the engagement metrics in here, and she asks um, if our engagement metric is really more focused on measuring stickiness and user loyalty than it does about interactions, like the number of comments and questions and content contributions, that kind of thing. And that's a really good point. I mean, where we're starting with engagement is really engagement with the site in terms of loyalty and, and looking at content. It's the amount of attention that our, our audience is giving to our content on our site. But over time, I think Jessica's right. Like we need to think about extending that collectively to include interactions as well as just time spent with our streams and number of pages viewed. So you know, we, we do expect that over time this will evolve as together we get better about measuring total, total engagement, right? But it's a, it's a starting point. Yeah, so our starting point was actually based on um, not having this ability to kind of standardize across station sites. So I think now that we have the potential to implement event tracking that would be common to all of our stations, that gives us a, a lot more ability to build a more complex metric that is 
going to capture more of those actions because now everyone can put event tracking on the same actions and we can start measuring those in a way that you wouldn't be looking at one station which is counting uh, clicks on slideshows and trying to compare that to a station that hasn't yet implemented that kind of tracking. Uh, another question is, will we be able to get data farther back than one month? The answer is yes. So we're in, our, in our early kind of staging environment here, we're testing it for a month's worth of data, but yes, we absolutely intend to extend this back to at least, at least a year's worth of data, right? Yeah, I, we want to be able to show year-on-year -year comparisons. I think that's important, um, and potentially adding year-to-date comparisons so that um, those type of metrics you, you would really need to start building two full years of data. Um, my personal preference is to get to that three-year mark because that gives you a really nice trend. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll be building all of that out. So thank you for that, that validation of our ideas. Another question is um, from a station who's in the process of moving to Core Publisher. And you know, if you're in that kind of place, then it makes sense to wait, um, not sign up for this, because we'll take care of uh, most of that work for you and make, just make that process easier. Yeah, and I did just want to clarify, um, because this is kind of the most common pitfall, is that if you do decide to use this code alongside your existing tracking, you need to use a different UA number. Um, you would need to create a new profile to send the data to, because if you use two tags to send information to the same account, that means that you're essentially going to be uh, doubling plus all of those enhancements. So you'll get twice the page views and then some event tracking on top of that or some custom variable tracking. Um, so if you do intend to, to double tag, you want to create a new Google Analytics account for that purpose. Any other good questions? Uh, so do I use this code on my Facebook and Twitter pages too? So right now you can't really do that because you can't really like put this code into a you know, the Twitter HTML or the Facebook page HTML per se. But that's why in the long run we're thinking about tapping into the Facebook API itself and the Twitter API so we can actually pull things like how many Twitter followers do you have and trend that over time and pull that right into this dashboard and actually show you a chart with that data. And again, enable you to compare your Facebook uh, likes or Twitter followers to other stations like you. But right now there's no way to really tap into the Facebook and Twitter part of, part of the metrics. Um, of course, in the meantime, you could go to Facebook and Twitter directly, as you probably already do, and, and look at your own metrics there. But in the long run, yeah, we really want to incorporate that uh, into the system. Uh, Jason is asking, will we be able to add our own specific metrics from non-standard services? We're probably looking long forward in terms of extendability. It's something we haven't, you know, we haven't, we've talked a little bit about, about that. You know, right now, where we're starting is tapping into the services like Facebook and Twitter that, that a lot of stations are using. And then over time, who knows? We might go much broader in terms of the type of data. Um, you know, Quantcast is a great service for getting competitive data. There's other things, you know, Pinterest and YouTube, right, where we have data. And then there's all sorts of APIs to tap into there. So we do think in the long run that we'll be able to extend that out. I will say that any service with an API is probably higher on um – on our roadmap than any service that doesn't have an API. So yeah. those social media metrics are probably going to be a lot sooner than, uh, than some of the other things. Yep, yep. A lot of people asking about podcast data as well, and um, we agree. We've actually just recently we're working on a plan to really scope out the level of effort to, 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 to create a system that would basically pull in logs from all the stations, parse those logs, and be able to generate reports on that as well. Um, it, it's a big effort, but it's something that we hear from a lot of stations, so we take that really seriously, and we're trying to figure out right now what would that take to get podcast and on-demand data into this as well. It's a great question. Oh, somebody asked as well, and I should have said this early on, um, yes, we will be posting the slides as well as a video of this webinar, um, and we'll probably post that to the, the digital services website. We'll send an email around when that goes out as well as a follow-up, so stay tuned for that. So you'll be able to reference the slides uh, and this video if you want to share it around to anybody else. Let's see if we've made it through all the questions here. We covered on demand and podcasting. Um, so, so somebody's asking about different user levels. So can I have a, you know, uh, and for example, if I, my station, want to cover the tag management and have total access to my station, but I want to give my 
my general manager just access to the dashboards, right? And that's something that we've, we've talked about. I think it's going to be on the list for us to, to think about and scope out and, and prioritize against everything else. But I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's something that, um, that we agree would be really helpful to have. Uh, covered that one. Great. This, there's lots of great comments. I appreciate you guys typing in and, and giving us all this great feedback. Um, so one question. This is, this is a good one. So are you storing the station analytics data on our cluster or are we just pulling from Google's API? Um, so it depends on the information that we're talking about, but we will be storing cached data um, to try and avoid some of those long uh, queries that we were coming up against. So some of it is going to be stored locally in a database, um, especially as we get to those longer time periods. So the idea is that um, we'd be able to run a monthly update and pull that information in just at, again, this is only going to be the summarized data. So if um, you want to look at longer periods of history, you'll probably have to go over to Google Analytics. So I think those high-level metrics, things like visits, visitors, um, bounce rates, things like that, we're going to be storing over a longer period of time so that we can show trends. But things like the content, I think, is only scoped to show up to uh, one month of data. Okay, and I think we've reached the end of the questions. There's a few questions individually that we'll follow up on separately. 